All right, everyone. Welcome once again to the Faces of Business. I am your host, Damon Postalka, and I am excited for our guest today because we're going to be talking about the keys to service business digital marketing with Krishna Lakhanini. And welcome, Krishna. Thank you, Damon. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah. I am just, first of all, thank you. Thank you. I just before we got on here, I was listening to your TED uh, TEDx talk, and and man, I just if if people that are listening to this go up and and look at your TEDx talk and do it. I mean, you want something that will um, make you realize what we have sitting where I am in today or where you're at in Canada today. Um, it will do that, but it also tell you that we can do better we can do yeah better. definitely there's so many opportunities and possibilities yeah yeah so krishna we always like to start back at the beginning your tedx talk starts about that starts with that a little bit and and kind of work through your your journey and how you got into what you're doing today so let's start there man thank you um you know, it's it's a long story and short story at the same time because it looks short because you have already done that, <laughs> you know. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm born and raised in India, and uh, my dad is a teacher, so you have probably heard a very similar story from a lot of immigrants. Uh, and for me, it was very similar. I had my own setbacks and obstacles and um, has many, many moments of I have no clue what I'm going to do if I get stuck here and that was very scary when you're living with uh, you know three pairs of clothes and two pencils for the entire year and you're living uh day to day and even though there was pain and i'm grateful for those days that made me who i am today i i suffered and i think that suffering led to i want to change this for myself and you know my family can do better and then I start learning and exploring what else is there to the world. Um, how are these big companies making money? And I was very curious to dig around uh, in terms of what the product is and how they're making money. Even though I was like 17, 19, had no clue, but like everybody else, uh, I became an electrical engineer. So that was my engineering graduation that's done. And I was always fascinated. My, by computers, but couldn't get mm -hmm. through because you had to be 99 percentile to get computer science education in India because it's very comparative. So out of uh, 200,000 that year, there's only a handful of them that goes to engineering school. And these are like IVs of India. And even though that was a good opportunity for me to explore a little bit more about myself and I'm like, okay, now I can get a job and whatnot. But there were certain things in the, like any other system, very bureaucratic and corrupt. And there were certain things that really challenged me. Like I spent my 21 years learning and educating and being top of the class. I had to do certain things that I couldn't agree with. And at the same time, I was helped by one of my professors to uh, loan me some money and say, you can do more with your life. And that was my turning point. And then I moved to UK, did my post um, post graduation certificate. And then I always wanted to be in a business no matter what. So I did another two years uh, chartered institute management and accounting. Um, I haven't completed it. All I was looking for is how do I read business statements, balance sheets, loss and profit statements. Um, and then I worked for an agency that was um, Carrot Media Group, Aegis, it has changed names over the years. That really gave me the opportunity to hone my skills in programming and technology and build systems for companies like Dell, Royal Bank of Scotland. So big companies, big opportunities, steep learning career past five years. And I'm like, a lot of people work 10, 15 years to get this kind of experience. Yeah. And then with that, I was looking for what else can I do where else can I move? And then Opportunity Canada came up 
and the company sponsored everything. And I'm like, okay, this is great. And I just had my first uh, born at that time, my son. And I was really missing that family time. Like, you know, the transition from uh, going to school and working, working, working to now all of a sudden you're a new dad. And yeah. I'm like, I want to find some balance in terms of my family life. And I quit that job and I moved to Canada. And I think the greatest, greatest advantage that I had was everything starts in like San Francisco, London, New York, or Europe, like Paris. So these are the hubs of innovation. So if you're working in those, in technology, in these places, you're always on the top of the curve. It's like the chat GPT now, like if you're in San Francisco, like 2015, 17, you're on chat GPT a long time ago than anybody else. So mm -hmm. I had that advantage and i'm like okay let me explore starting a new business but the challenge is i never ran my own business i don't know mm -hmm. if running a real business okay i had my team that's all it ends so i took a year to really learn the nitty-gritty of what is running a business like and um, there's a lot of case studies i went through and business canvas model came in really handy to put it on the paper okay Let's pull the plug. Let's make it happen. And then I think the first year was like made like $30,000 consulting. And I'm like, hmm, that's okay. It's great. But how do I scale it? Mm -hmm. Right. And then it also gave me the courage because now I have some funding. So I'm like, okay, I can go and hire my first employee. And this is all the way back 15 years ago. Um, yeah, 2009, uh, 2010. Mm -hmm. wow. And ever since it's been new types of businesses and work with like 150 plus clients and 200, 220 projects oddly. And most of them are like lead generation and marketing. And um, our core focus is what can we do to bring value to our clients? What is that extra mile that we can go? And it usually is tracking and conversions. You know, this is where my engineering background and programming background comes in because this is what exactly I was doing back in 2005. Mm -hmm. So um, we just had that special secret ingredient yeah. and that changed a lot of things. And we can track everything for our clients and say, hey, you know, you got like $300,000 worth of leads this month. And what is the percentage of closures and how do we optimize it so you're having higher closing ratio and mm -hmm. which is something easy to focus on because it's difficult to acquire a new customer but if somebody said yes send me the bill or send me a call if you have a better systems and process in place you can close them easy mm -hmm. so our focus was on the conversions and setting up the oral process and measuring it accurately so the client is happy making money and we're growing and uh, i i didn't look back yeah it changed everything for everybody that's like yeah out there uh, yeah. but it was a great journey yeah really cool so dan aldridge is asking what's your website it's roimediaworks.com or dot ca um i prefer people going to dot ca because you know this is where we are yeah roi and media my personal works website is like any.com that's L-A-K-K-I-N-E-N-I.com. Maybe that's the better option because they have all the other companies and projects that I worked on. Okay, good, good. So Dan, it's uh, he's got it there for you. Um, I just want to say, Dan, thanks for stopping by. And we got Anakin um, is, is by here today. Thanks so much. And he's... We will we will get you a profile link in in uh, LinkedIn. You are V Krishna, in in parentheses V K Lakanani, and uh, that that you can find in there, Dan. And I will send it after we get off. But so let's let's go back because I mean, you made it sound like you just did your ROI Media Works, and this is what you've been doing. Is we're going to talk today about you know service business digital marketing and you've already hit a lot of good stuff there but you you've developed some interesting stuff here because the one that i was looking at that really was kind of interesting that 
Indo Can Golf Links. What's it's what's this about golf? That's a nonprofit charity. Yeah. Um, and they they have been going for I think at least 12 years before me, and I joined the board just to bring the community together. And our okay. goal was basically fundraise for um, our university and also for a hospital. Um, mm -hmm. So every year we're running a golf tournament, invite all the business people, let's have some fun, let's donate some money. And then we created a lot of scholarships uh, at the university here. Very cool. And also bought a lot of equipment at the hospital. I mean, you know, it's inevitable, like education and health, two things we just can't avoid. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, so good. So good. So now you, you, um, you got a couple startups you work with. One was snap Q QR and buddy golf. That's what I was, I was, I missed the wrong part, but so yeah. Buddy golf. What the heck is that? Or what? Buddy go basically, let's say you want to go for right now and you, your handicap is like 12 or 14. Yeah. And what would you normally do? You would text three or four of your friends or post on a Facebook group and wait for the response, find the course that you want to go to, find the time slot, pay for it, and then you show up. But for me, um, those days I was learning golf and my handicap is high. So for good players, it was frustrating for them. So, yeah. and I feel like I'm dragging them behind. So I built this app basically you can just register yourself, put your handicap, so as the other people. And then if you want to go golfing, the heck, let's say Monday, 11 a.m., if you're free, you want to golf, you put that slot in, and then it sends notifications to the core people in your group that matches all those requirements. It's almost like the golf dating in a way. And then if they want to play, okay, and it automatically shows these are the slots available at these courses, Click, 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 four clicks later, you got your foursome. It made the booking, it paid for it. You just show up. Wow. Wow. So it's it's that's cool because you're helping people that golfed about the same find other people to go golf with. Yeah, like golf is probably most underrated business education, in my opinion. I made a ton of connections, high net worth individuals. Yeah. You're you're there, you're talking, and it's business. And you know, you can really see the behavior uh in 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 the game itself like okay can i do business with this person or not that's a great point i never thought about it when i was in the in i lived in the southeast for for a number of years and we golf was big it was big there you know it was like you said we're doing business on the golf course but at least once or twice a week and but you can till still you can tell by how someone plays golf how they're going to be in business in life yeah, like who moved this ball? Like, <laughs> yeah, 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 that's a good one. That's a good one. Or how how, how you uh, deal with adversity, too. That's because that always happens in golf. But yeah, have seen all sorts of things people throwing the clubs to, kicking the balls to, digging it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's cool. So, as you as you've been working with ROI Media Works, you talked a bit about that. And we're talking today about service business, digital marketing. I know that's that's part of what what you guys are doing. You're and as you say, you're using dentists, HVAC companies, spas, lawyers, you're, you know, those service kind of businesses. What are some of the things that you're seeing that have really changed over the last 10 years in in those kind of businesses and their digital marketing needs? Well, from talking to like even now, people don't understand the power of digital marketing and advertising can do to their business. They think they're doing it. They think they're paying for it. But eight out of 10 times when I look at their numbers, so you got 100 people and then 99 people left within two seconds after they came onto the website. So they don't measure anything if it's helping their business or not. And that baffles me. And then along the way, using the marketing, how do you build a brand? It's like, you know, if you're selling nails, you don't need to sell a hammer. It's just obvious. It's just like 
known. Okay, if you're buying nails, you need a hammer to go with it. So how do you build a brand so your conversions are high and you're attracting the right type of clients and customers so you're not spending too much in advertising dollars, right? Yeah. And over the years, I have done so many workshops educating them on the process, and we always believed and applied omni-channel presence. So it's not like just Facebook. It's just not like LinkedIn. It's just not like Google. What really works for you, but create a strategy in terms of where they're coming from. The first touch point from a customer from Google can be different than the third touch point that's coming from Facebook. But where they actually say, take my money and I'm buying this product or I need an estimate. So those signals are really helpful to decide I'm spending too much money here or too less money there. And no matter what business it is, I always encourage them to spend to the maximum as long as there is good return on investment and don't be afraid of spending more in the ad dollars. You spend and spend, but when you're measuring your cost per acquisition for new client goes down and then your closing ratio is high up, uh, goes high, and then your revenues and bottom line goes up. Um, and even today, a lot of businesses don't understand that complete cycle. And I educate them and that's how we get our leads and say, this is what you need to do and let's look at what they're, you're doing and let's find those problems that they're facing and solve them for them, right? And yeah. with the AI, now it's even became much easier. The more you understand the consumer behavior, the signals are there, the better judgments you can make in terms of where you're spending the ad dollars. Believe it or not, like in terms of global advertising, 25 to 40% of all these programmatic ads, it's all wasted. It's all like either the bots or wrong people, wrong target, yeah. or the ad, the ad shows up in an app where you had to wait five seconds to skip it to play the game. They're not the right target, right? And and how do you, you know, effectively track these things and improving the conversions all the time? Yeah, yeah. So Dan's got a question. He said, how do you keep people on your website? Is it content? And and then he asked about how do you measure it too and, and what percent of your leads come through the website? But first, let's answer the first question. What are some of the ways? Because it, it is a, you mentioned it because I know people, I see clients that get this kind of, they get their report from their marketing, so-called marketing person that says, well, you're, you, you got X amount of visitors on your website. That's all they say. They don't say what they did, how long they were there, or anything like that. So how do you keep people on websites usually when you're looking at these service businesses? It's always the engaging content, talking to them face-to-face. -face. And uh, the technology has evolved enough to show a different type of content to a family versus somebody single looking for a different type of product. So how do you make those changes real time? I mean, there used to be A-B testing and conversion optimization, but now you can really use data management databases that links to your website that changes the page based on what type of visitor it is. Wow. And the sections would look different. So a lot of tourism companies that we work with uses that technology and it's so powerful. No doubt. And, so... and right now, uh, video is golden no matter if it is facebook reels instagram reels TikTok, or youtube it's the video uh i mean i'm not surprised the changes in people behavior uh we used to write less read more but now we don't even have time to read a 250 word paragraph but our brains are now set to watch a TikTok and scroll up so the two two minute video works much better than a 2000 word document. Yeah, that's a good point because it is content, first of all, like you said, but if it can be video content, that seems like that really, everything I hear, everything I see uh, from from other marketing people and, and from results is when you can use your, your short form video, uh, yeah. it really makes a difference. It really makes a difference. Yeah, and the relevancy too. So if somebody yeah. searched a keyword and then, they landed on the home page versus the specific page, a landing page built for that target keyword. It's different. Like when they're on the home page, they might not see 
the relevancy of what they search. For example, uh, if somebody looks up like Morpheus 8 uh, or Cool Sculpting, any of these uh, keywords, if they go to the homepage, yes, it, it's kind of lost in between 10, 12 other treatments that the service provider has. But if we can send them direct to that page that's specifically optimized for these keywords, everything is just about that. So you're saving that click, saving that time, giving them what they want right away. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great point is that your pages, your specific pages need to be optimized. So you don't just hit a home page, you hit that specific page. Yeah. That makes a huge difference. Um, so how many people, if you just said 100 service businesses, how many people out there today you think are are, are doing it at least reasonably well out of 100? I would say maybe in the 50 to 60% mark, that could be even surprisingly high. Um, like Google has the tools, SEMrush, so as HubSpot, many companies has this comparative analysis tools where you can really go back and look at what keywords they're focused on, what their conversions are and whatnot. Um, usually there's a lot of overlap unless it's like a, a huge company that understands the branding and also understand the power of advertising and leverage both of them. It's rarely you see them effectively using their ad dollars. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Because and, I, I don't know, like, I don't know if you notice this too. Everybody thinks they know how to post on Facebook, which is true, but there is a tactic. Yes. I know how to use Canva or Adobe, make it great creative. But what usually missing is the strategy. What is the long-term vision and goals for this campaign and how we are tracking everything and how much money we're going to make and are we spending enough? And if not, what needs to be changed? Nobody does that. Everybody just want the Band-Aid. Okay, like, you know, sometimes I get email from clients. Can we advertise for this position? Like, can we put some ads up? And I'm like, do you have a recruitment page on your website or are you on Indeed, right? Like you're wasting your money if you're just advertising this one job. Put yeah. everything, take applications continuously, keep advertising, attract the great talent. Yeah. You're, that is one of the changes I sure have noticed in the last five years is that it used to be okay if your business maybe had a job page or maybe had something, but now because the expectation of people coming in has changed so much, your overall brand, your overall marketing has to include current and potential future employees as well. And yeah, yeah, you, you got to keep recruiting. I mean, in the advertising industry, the revolving door is average two to quarter years. Um, pretty much everybody learns, get bored, and they want to find something more or better paying job, mm -hmm. uh, that's inevitable. So the only way you can combat that is just have all the jobs out there and just keep recruiting. Um, and obviously you will find good candidates that's always looking for a prospective job, right? And yeah. Just tag them in and bring them to work for you and see how that goes. Yeah. Yeah. So Dan, Dan asked a couple other questions. He's, he said he's using Vidyard to create some short, short videos, demos, and, and different things like that. Um, and, uh, and then he also talks about another thing about heat maps. So how much, I mean, when you're looking at these service businesses, when you look at them and you go, the power of video, we're talking about video is hot, the power of video. And you look at two web, websites and you go one's using video and one's using not using video yeah what kind of a difference in traffic conversion or you know inquiries i mean are we talking like if you switch a a a website over and embed video in it you're going to get three or four times the conversion or what what is it how what does it really do like so can, like we do have a 12 point checklist for better conversions on the page itself. Uh, video is just one of them, but the uh -huh. way you repurpose it, leverage it, the short form content. So if you create a video, you can create at least like 16 short form content out of it. 
they can go into multiple formats. And depending on what it is, you can tell a story and lead them onto the website. And then on the website, they get to hear the full story. For example, oh. let's take a auto dealership, right? And I'm like, I'm at this great viewpoint and I stop by and there is this amazing Mustang behind me and I'm loving the spin. And if you want to learn more, go here. And I can create those series of videos that short form content, put it on YouTube or TikTok, but also use them to bring them onto the website where they get to have more information about everything that I'm doing and why am I doing that. And it's all about the storytelling combined with using the powerful brand. Yeah. Yeah. And and people love to watch uh, videos. Uh, it's it's mind blowing how much time they spend on their phones just mindless scrolling, but they do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you're telling that story and giving them something engaging to watch, they're gonna they're gonna stay on. They're gonna stay on. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So let's step back a little bit and because I I it really is pretty powerful, and I, I, I'd like to I'd like to talk a moment about your TEDx and and what really inspired you to do a TEDx talk. I mean, what what was uh, honestly? It was a little bit of anger, frustration, and uh, how much we are leveraging what we have and not being grateful for. It. Okay, um, yeah. because. I, I know the struggle of not having enough food. I know the struggle of not having enough. Um, but now I, I see it differently and I'm grateful for it. But the bottom line is when you have everything just granted, you take it for granted, and then there is no gratitude towards that. And, and I want to share that story in a way that it's impacting people to go and do more good towards uh, kids' poverty and education. Because mm -hmm. I know when I was in my 10th grade, there were other kids as smart as me, as intelligent as me, and we were competing. And sometimes they're even scoring way better than me. But just because they're poor, they couldn't continue their education. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that's a big no. And that's still happening in India and in, in, in many other countries. And, and I want to bring some awareness around that. Like, you know, when a kid was born, he didn't choose where to be born or whatnot. So how do we make a, a society that's better serving everybody? And how do we take care of each other as, a, as humans? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because that is one of the things. I mean, I, I, I think about it often the fact that we can create sp spaceships that have gone to the moon. We can create space vehicles that have gone past the end of our solar system. We can put a multi gazillion billion dollar Weber telescope up or whatever it's called in the, you know, into the deep space now, but we can't figure out how to get somebody clean water and a little bit of food need. It, it just yeah, baffles and, and that's, me. It just baffles uh, me. Yeah. It's it's unfortunate. That's the um, the faces of uh, you know in a way capitalism, yeah. and that got to the greed. And uh, you know I'm getting uh, a bit of political here, uh, but if you research, there's only three companies that's dictating everything, like BlackRock, Citadel, and a couple of other smaller guys, mm. who has majority stakes in every company out there. If you look at your cereals like the uh, uh, Coca-Cola, like all these companies have investors from these BlackRock and these companies. So mm -hmm. when the money is pooled like that and monopolized, of course, they want to make decisions based on what's creating the shareholders value and, you know, the CEO is making more money. Uh, and I'm not saying money is bad or they can't mm -hmm. make money but how do you make sustainable yeah. and you and i know like there is a curve and it goes up you're extremely happy you're wealthy you every necessity is met and then after that point you can't add any value at all like you can bring so much money into it 
but it doesn't give you the so much joy and happiness. Mm -hmm. And yeah. at that point, can we look at it and say, okay, I'm taking a $36 million debt, buying a yacht that's sitting in Arabian Sea for the next six months versus what can I do with that money? Yeah. Yeah, right? there's definitely, there's definitely uh, choices that we could be making differently that, that could help help a lot of people. Yeah, and I feel like all these celebrities and uh, multi-millionaire billionaires got stuck in that pattern of maintaining that status. They need that money to keep things going. Uh, but like as a society, we're we're debt-based society. Right? So as the banks, so as the governments. So yeah. the reality is, even though you have the net worth of $100 million, what is the hard, hard cash that's in there? Maybe yeah. that's usually one-tenth out of it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I come back to again, you know, I, I, I just think that there, there are, when we look at things, um, there are better ways we can do what we need to do. That's for sure. A lot. Yes. That's what you do, but I'm glad that you, the glad that you took the time to do the TEDx because I think that, um, you know, we all have to do our part and if we can, it, it, it'll get better. Yeah, I was finding the mediums, like, how do I get message out? How can I inspire people, motivate people? So as my yeah. documentaries or books or my coaching program, it's always about how can we do more as humans and yeah. create that more abundance for everybody. Yeah, that's cool. So as you're, as you're helping these service businesses, what are some of the real wins that you're seeing now with, with them when they're, when they're starting to, so you they walk up to you and they go, okay, day one, we want some help. Um, and we're talking down the road, you go, wow, it, they're, they're going, wow, we never thought, or it was, it's pretty crazy that this happens. Yeah. Like most of the business that we work with, they're like in the two year, three year mark early stage, and they really want to make a difference. And I look at the passion behind the entrepreneur and say, these are the tools that you can use to get the product out. Um, you know, there were a couple of businesses, like especially in the um, home improvement sector and HVAC, uh, so mm -hmm. as the spots and dentists, uh, usually what happens is some of these entrepreneurs has great vision. Like they, they tell me right up front, you know, I want to grow my staff to this number by this year. And that inspires me because I'm not only doing like my job, but I'm also witnessing somebody's success while I'm building my business. Yeah. So you have a shoulder to lean on to and chit chat. How is it going? Right. Um, yeah. I have a realtor. He was selling like 20 homes a month on the average in the city. They sell about 80 a year and he sells 20 a month. Oh, 20 a month. Right. Yeah. So how do you create that kind of success and, and you're measuring it? Um, and I, I usually have uh, lunches with all my accounts. I do mm -hmm. them personally, catch up, you're looking for investments, what's your next steps? Are you investing in real estate? Because I have a huge network of people too. So mm -hmm. why don't I make that introduction so they can go and do something else? And it's all fun. And, and he was talking to me and, and I said, how, how much are you doing? He's like, uh, I think this year we did 6.7 million. And I'm like, okay, that's amazing. And uh, we were just chatting. Okay, is that space or not? What are you doing? And he's like, it's interesting. You asked that I'm trying to build another building right next door, but this is where we are stuck. I want to buy the business, buy the building so I can expand further. And, I'm, and I was just laughing and he's like, Krishna, why are you laughing? And I'm like, remember you were at 1.7 million when we start working with you. This is 80 years ago. And he needed to do a PowerPoint presentation to a big corporation to get the exclusivity. And he was like, I mean, he's a business guy, great business guy, but PowerPoint is not something he would do. Yeah. And I do these business speeches day to day. So I'm like, okay, I'll put the slideshow together and he has half an hour, he went to airport, did his pitch, and he got the contract. So these are the conversations, right? Like I see yeah. them growing from 1.7 to 6.7. And I'm like, what is your exit plan? And he's like, five, six years, I want to hit the, uh, 10 million at least. And, and I'm like, okay, so you have a lot of money. So what is your retirement look like? 
And the interesting thing for a lot of like humbled entrepreneurs, it doesn't change much. They do their, you know, snowmobiling and, you know, yep. going on their sailing trips. It stays study, right? Yep. Like they don't just go and show off like a lottery winner or anything like that. Um, yeah. And another example, there is a, a, a MD and uh, she's a dermatologist. Uh, she travels and works at other clinics. But uh, six years ago, she took courage and said, maybe I want to invest uh, in my own clinic. And uh, that started. And now, you know, 4,000 patients on her email list and about 10% of them coming back every year. Uh, she doesn't have to look back, but she still yeah. wants to grow, right? Like one location yeah. to our location. And uh, yeah. we work with um, nail saloon spas, basically it's franchisees. Uh, so, you know, you can buy a lot of assets cheap when somebody's going broke, yeah. right? You're just, you know, you would have the rents, you would have other expenses anyway. All you're buying is just whatever the inventory that's left and, mm -hmm. you know, almost like a liquidation sale, but I don't want to see an entrepreneur at that level, but you can do a good job and, you know, grow from there. And they had great success. Um, and we work with a lot of jewelry stores that's uh, selling like Pandora jewelry and all these mm -hmm. wedding bands. Uh, and, and surprisingly, people still spend a lot of money on jewelry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they do. They do. They still do. Well, that's that's cool. And it and then and you really um, it's cool how you get to be with the clients long term and watch their success, your success, help to fuel their success, to help to fuel their life. Uh, beyond the business in, in really how yeah, our average client retention is, uh, sorry, I cut you off there. No, no, uh, go ahead. Like client retention is eight, nine years. Like, all Oh God, that's, that's awesome. Started. That's awesome. And, and, and we don't take more clients either. Usually 10, 12 new clients a year. You know, it's not much, but I want to keep it lean. I mean, after COVID, I learned a lesson. Yeah. Keep it lean, keep it profitable. And of course, you know, 14 years and maybe in five years I start preparing for my exit way. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. Well, what do you see on the horizon? What's, what's happening now? Everybody's talking about AI. It's going to solve all our problems. It, make it so none of us have to work. What do you think an AI is going to do to, you know, marketing for these small businesses? Uh, AI, um, you know, people are scared of AI, honestly, like, especially in the marketing world. Um, and is it there yet? Maybe, maybe not. But there is a saying, right? If you can't find them, join them. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's what we did. Uh, we start building some of our process and models using AI. And it's efficient and you're not missing it. And I'm not reading 20 emails. It's summarizing it for me, uh, yeah. which is great. It's, it's saving a ton of time. And... Um, with few clicks, you can create PowerPoint presentations to websites, and it's vast and it's evolving. Uh, but where I see advantages for our marketing clients is we're actually building uh, chatbots that specifically trained on clients' data and their products and services. Mm -hmm. So I've heard about that. So, so you can actually then build it based on, hey, this is what Damon does at this business, and it give it all the information you can about that, and then it can yeah. answer questions, talk in real time with people about it. Yeah, and then it's a little slow. It takes five, ten seconds sometimes, depending on because uh, you have a data query and then you have to synthesize it. And I actually have uh, have it on my phone. I I use that in stuff Siri because it's. It has more accurate information, um, and and that's where it's going. And it can even evolve into, um, you know, the generative AI has p many potential opportunities. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm sure you have seen this in the news. There are companies paying two hundred thousand dollars to get your persona. They scan you, they build a robot out of you, and you know they can use it for whatever they want in the games to commercials. Uh, and and mm -hmm. it's endless. And I think the scary part with this is um, there's no regulation or policy framework around this yeah. yet, and it's evolving too fast. Uh, and you know, specifically in marketing, like 
all the titles like we use AI with our Google advertising systems and it tests the ads and writes the titles descriptions in real time and looks for the keywords and I get an update every day these are probably the most profitable keywords in the next seven days I mean some of this product predictive analysis uh, we couldn't do that fast you know by the time it takes a day for you to come up with conclusion it's probably moved on it's like he's hit and miss but with this predictive analysis you can really do things faster and you can auto yeah. apply a lot of these suggestions right away wow yeah it's going to be something and like you said it's, you, if you can't beat me you gotta gotta join it but it is it is and and you hear this from a lot of people that that are around this kind of stuff yourself included that not having some like boundaries or or any regulations or any limitations really um it it could be dangerous for us but it, it is it is it's an inevitable risk um so how do we work yeah. together with the systems um you know a lot of people don't know that ai existed even uh, going back like four or five years ago when uh you know i don't know if you heard of aladdin it's a uh, it's talk bot right yeah so it's it's already there i was doing that and people mm -hmm. are just realizing what's happening yeah yeah yep good stuff well krishna thank you so much for being here today i mean you i mean when we go back and think about what you're you're talking about the service business your examples of your clients your man your uh tenure with your clients eight nine years but the the importance of now adopting video into your into your marketing because of the the changes in keeping people engaged in your your content short form video and how your storytelling can work and then also back to your roots of understanding how that really measuring the results are we getting the right people are they engaging with us the way that we want to be and are they creating uh actual better business results for us or marketing is it actually being effective i just thanks so much for being here no thank you thank you and if i can leave with one thought for anybody um with any advertising models whether it's facebook google uh every customer needs to build their own models and have their own data if 10 customer walks in every day that's 3650 customers in a year you want to have their phone number email and how do you use that to leverage that for your business growth you can use it for facebook marketing google marketing whatever google can die tomorrow facebook can die tomorrow but you would need customers to grow your business that is gold right there because i think that and i'll just say because the because there's a lot of people that have built businesses that have went way up on these social platforms and a social platform change was made and they go way down yeah and they're doing that but when you own that customer data and you understand who those customers are and how they got there it's powerful for you in the future so totally. thank you so much appreciate you being here today i want to say dan Thanks a lot. Lots of good kind. He, Dan even brought in the Bill Gates. He was talking about that after we were talking about, um, you know, making making things better for the world. Uh, Dan also he just released an article the other day. I read it on LinkedIn about AI and ERP. Dan does ERP ERP work and requires resource planning work for for larger companies, and uh, did some good stuff there. But Krishna, lack any. Oh, excuse me. Say your last name for me because I'm getting like any lack of any. Yes, I said it right the first time earlier, yes. but I couldn't get it again from ROI Media Works. Uh, and if people are looking for you on LinkedIn, it is V Krishna lack of any and uh, with the VK in parentheses. So you know who it is and they can reach out there. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks, everyone else. We'll be back again with another episode next week. Hang out for Thank a minute. You. Thanks for tuning you in, bet. yes.